Hey, come here. I want to show you how BPRO Polka Markets and Polkadex are going to react should Bitcoin tank down to 50K, which is essentially the next target down if a higher low can't be formed. But I also want to show you what specifically to look out for in the chart for each of these three assets independently should Bitcoin find some strength where it is and start heading up when your coins would fly under those parameters. All right, let's dive in. Okay, so we're starting off with BPRO. We are looking at the weekly chart. I have on all of the weekly EMAs that exist for BPRO. So the purple is the 89. So usually the 89 is a very deep correction if it is a uh, bull market for the most part. And um, and then the blue is a mid-deep correction. And uh, for altcoins, the yellow line, which is the 21 EMA, is a typical correction for an altcoin that hasn't flown up 3000 plus percent. So um, if, if price hits the blue line, that's a pretty darn deep correction, right? And if it hits the purple during a bull market, that is even deeper. So that's so for point of relativity, the purple line is really deep. That means like Bitcoin price has really been suffering here if it's that far down on the weekly EMAs. For perspective's sake, you know, Bitcoin is above its yellow line, right? And and BPRO's below its blue one, which is farther down. So let's like so for perspective, I want to show you what Bitcoin is doing right now. See that Bitcoin is uh, even above its red, and BPRO is like right here. Right. So, you know, BPRO is having a little bit of trouble right now relative to even Bitcoin and Bitcoin, honestly, is performing pretty freaking well uh, versus um, versus altcoins, which is very typical after a large dip. Bitcoin typically performs best first with very few exclusions like AVAX right now is doing very well. So all things considered. Um, BPRO, this is the first week that it's been below its weekly 10 and EMA, EMA in a while. Uh, the red line, so see how, let me take off price, see how that red line is there. All right, so this is the first week below and it's going down, you know, right around the uh, blue line. So should Bitcoin um, uh, head down to 50K, uh, BPRO is probably going to wick below and then close a the candle fairly sick with space to save above the blue line on the week. So this is the weekly 55 EMA is the blue line, but it's probably going to wick below if Bitcoin tanks. Like it, it might wick. It honestly might hit this origin line here. I'm so it, it could go down to 0 0.0066 uh, on a wick, right? So it'd be hard to buy that. It might not get all the way down there. And if somebody tries to buy, for example, at that, um, if Bitcoin were to go to 50 K, if somebody were to try to buy $10,000, like at a $10,000 limit by order, you know, I would assume that not all of it would fill, even if price truly did hit it, right? Because then uh, buyers would drive the price back up um, because they probably watch uh, my videos. So, <laughs> I mean, that might be part of it, actually. Um, you know, really bounces uh, are a self-fulfilling prophecy for the most part. As long as enough people are seeing the same thing, it will happen. That's pretty much. And so all in trading, all you're trying to do is anticipate where are enough groups of people viewing different things. Where do Where is there enough convergence, right? Not divergence, but where are all the different types of people what they're looking at a chart where are they going to come together where you're where you're trading uh, horizontals or or trend lines or whatever when will enough people step in and turn this around so i would say a wick below then uh the week itself whenever if it, it could be this week honestly like bitcoin has a serious threat of diving back back down to um to 52k with a wick down to 50 um for a hot minute so it could happen this week i don't think it's probable but i mean it might be this i think it's the second most probable scenario so watch out for that you know definitely use the weekly emas um and um and so i don't even think the daily 200 yeah so it's already going past the daily 200 so nothing there are no emas any farther down uh for bpro so it, this is a weekly play you need to look at the weekly chart and then you know if you wanted to catch a dip at bitcoin where it really start heading down which is totally possible um then uh, you'd want to set some limit buys probably below the blue line maybe a few above here if you like doing limit buys um that would probably be a pretty good snag now another type of style uh, is always waiting for a higher low so no matter how low bitcoin goes you know, people like to see a recovery, then a higher low, you know, maybe not on the weekly scale, like the four hour scale, four hour higher low. That's even safer than trying to just put limit buys. Because what if Bitcoin just really tanks back down to 20K or something? You know, people's coming back down here and you were buying right here. Right. And you're screwed. So, I mean, is that likely that that would happen? No. But waiting for a higher low, you sacrifice trying to catch ultimate lows and you go for more safety. So you go for a mixture of low prices with higher safety. And that, like I, I really like higher lows. But 
but it's fun trying to catch ultimate lows. It, it's pretty fun. I just suggest if you do that and you only have a thousand dollars to spend on Beepro, if you know if that's your thing, you know, I, I don't know if I'd put limit buys for my four, full thousand, you know, somewhere below the blue line uh, in anticipation as a, of a possible dip. Um, I would maybe do it with half, not financial advice. We are definitely talking about Pokemon cards and uh, securing and accumulating Pokemon cards. So um, you also have this horizontal here or this. Um, uh, we have to go down to a lower chart to see this, but I mean, let's take off the EMAs. Uh, you also have this uh, this trend line that's broken. So uh, from point A, B, and C, you know, like it, it might use it as resistance coming up for a while. When it breaks above, it's going to scream into the green box. So what should you be looking out for? For you know, assuming um, Bitcoin closes the daily candle back above, let's say 65k. So that's the first step. So when will Bpro recover? Well, the first is Bitcoin is your primary indicator for your altcoin. Period. Same with uh, PDX and bulk, right? So uh, Bitcoin closing a daily candle back above 65k or maybe 64.5. So one one of those two levels. That's your key indicator that um, that Bpro might start moving back up so don't forget that okay the second thing is um, i typically don't use a stochastic rsis um but whenever ooh, why isn't the um i thought that would have looked a little different here hmm I'm surprised it's like that. Uh, I, I would have thought it would be lower because typically stochastic RSIs move pretty fast. Anyway, uh, the stochastic RSI historically moves a lot faster. It's more finicky. You know how stokes go up and down, up and down. So stochastic RSI moves faster than RSI. Um, so when you see the stochastic uh, RSI curl back up, that is probably when um, BPRO is going to gain some momentum. So you see how it curled up here, the blue crossed above the red, bam, that got that move. See how it curled up here, you know, and the blue gains, or let me actually expand this. So the blue gained some distance above the red, right? So it was bottomed out for a while, but once you saw a blue tick up, that no, that makes you realize, hey, this move could be powerful because it completely bottomed out and the blue crossed above. So the next cross, you know, could uh, coincide with, you know, not an ultimate low. You're not trying to catch ultimate lows with this indicator, but rather, when do I have confidence that this is going to continue upward and northward for another good push? And I would probably use this stochastic rsi in this case because it's it's going to be a little bit faster of a signal a little faster than rsi itself so this rsi is about the same posturing um but it will take a little longer let me make sure i actually had the was that the stochastic r i would have guessed it was all the way down no it's about the same posturing but it will turn around a little faster than the weekly um and if you want to front run it you can do the same thing but if you can have access to the five day chart because you pay for it uh, cross up on the stochastic R side there will allow you to catch a little lower on the move, right? But also with that safety net. So maybe it's the five day stochastic R side on BPRO that would help you catch roughly the beginning, not the ultimate load, the beginning of the next move up. And uh, so those are my targets and specifically what to look out for on BPRO. So now stay tuned for this BPRO, folks, because I'm going to cover Polk and Polka markets and what um, they are doing. It will apply to BPRO sooner than later, especially PDEX, which I'm going to cover last. You should stay for that because breaking out of a range is something that BPRO will do sooner, like a very defined range. So right now, BPRO is in a very sloppy range, a very volatile range, um, and and so, but it will form a very defined range, similar to how Mover is and uh, PDEX are very super defined uh, ranges so make sure you stay tuned to that because that's so if you learn how that works on pdex now when it happens to be pro then you already know what's going to happen or what your greatest probabilities are within that situation right so before we get any further flip your phones you get flipped off hey Tim, what does that mean that means literally your phone is horizontal flip it vertically hit the like button for you and guess what's going to help me out making videos for you even more if you leave me a quick comment such as a period without the tampon yell your favorite food lasagna because you're meow garfield the cat or whatever uh, yell your favorite corn cardano actually don't do cardano i don't like that coin lie to me if it's cardano say something else but tell me your favorite coin whatever it is and uh make sure that bell is hit because that bell is going to help me help you walk through a more profitable crypto journey because this is time sensitive stuff help me help you make sure that bell is hit and let's keep moving on get it all right so now we're going to go to polk All right, so I'm going to start off with a weekly chart in mind as well. So Polk, I mean, is really positioned pretty well. Um, so if so, downside target, if Bitcoin were to hit 50K, I would say this would wick down um, below the 10 and hit the 21, the weekly 21, because it's on this uh, origin line as well. So if uh, 50K BTC, you would have a wick down, and I would bet that Polk, there would be enough buyers of Polk to drive it, to close this candle, um, or if it's the next candle, doesn't matter. But the same candle that it wicks down to the yellow line, which is the weekly 21, I bet 
papyrus and buy it back up and push it just above the red and then continuation to the upside, assumingly, or just, you know, some consolidation on it. So what could happen if Bitcoin does that is uh, something like this. So imagine that's uh, the red uh, 10 EMA, the line I just drew. You know, you could get something like, um, you could get something like, uh, you know, a green candle there. A red candle there. It could ride the, actually, that's a horrible way. Tim, uh, Tim, that's a horrible way to draw candles. Yeah, I know. All right. So let's do something like this so you can envision this. Uh, so like maybe a green candle bounce there. So it might write it for a while with wicks below. So imagine the next one wick below, but it actually closed above, right? But a red candle that wick below closed above, it could write it for a few weeks if Bitcoin does that because the whole market might write 10 EMAs before taking off. You can envision something like that happening. So that could happen. You, um, but but if it, so, it might not like just V shape if it comes back down and uh, and hits this yellow line bulk. It might consolidate for a, several weeks, including Bitcoin and the whole market essentially, and then really start racing up. You know, maybe the tenth of the set, or ugh, that would probably be around Christmas, honestly. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I just have a feeling that the market's getting ready to race up though because Christmas is coming and. I just, yeah, I think this market's going to turn around pretty fast here. So I just, I, I don't think 50K is the most probable, but it is the second most probable because you never know. I mean, we could be in a phase where we're, Bitcoin's going to consolidate at 60K for three months. You don't know. Um, with, with a large dip back down to 50K around, like just after the new year, just before the new year, and then back to 65K between 65 and 60 for until March. Like that could, and then it blasts off to 150K in April. You never, you don't know. But I think Bitcoin's going to move totally differently than 2017. I know a lot of people out there are justifying that it's just like 2017, but it, it's not even close. I can prove it to you, like very simply. I mean, like it's, it's not even close. It's a lot closer. 2013 actually um much 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 closer i, I actually kind of um since i i i pretty much have i almost have like down to the on bitcoin the the weekly candles memorized like across all of time in the history of bitcoin not quite to that degree but it's pretty close um and uh i just don't know how people could sit there like people have been on crypto youtubers for a while so oh, it's just like 2017 like, i i don't i i so sometimes you know instead of just shaking my head saying no it's not i try to understand how somebody would say something like that and i uh in trying to understand i don't even know how they could even come to that thought process right so what are you looking out for on bulk so it ran over ran over i didn't rant about cardano this time aren't you proud of me all right so um so what are you looking out for on bulk um for Recovery. Well, I mean, so I mean, Polk's stokes are like way up there. I mean, these are weekly stokes and they're in the bullish control zone. So a dip below and then a curl back up. So you want to see them curling back up and you could have used the same um, RSI. Or I mean, stochastic RSI. Yeah, honestly, you might use stochastic RSI on this as well. Um, but uh, but when one of the stochastic R size, uh, that would be probably when uh, Polk will start going. Or once you um, uh, wick below or like hit the ten, close a candle, and then and then rise above whichever candle hits the ten. Once you get a weekly green candle closure above any candle that touches it. So let's say let's for example, let's say um, Polk this week hits the red, the red line, right, and Bitcoin recovers. Whenever you have a week close above the beginning of this candle, that is when it's probably going to start taking off. All right. So you can use candle structures on the weekly, but again, here the weekly is probably what you're going to look at. You can you could probably use the daily as well. Um, I think uh, I think this has a strong chance of bouncing off the daily 200, which might honestly align really closely with the weekly 10. So let's check this out. Uh, weekly 10 EMA. It's just below. So. But yeah, that's just extra support. So see how the daily 200 is right next to the weekly 21. So you have three strong EMAs. So three areas all bunched together, right? Where buyers will step in. So Bitcoin, you know, uh, taking the 50K, I think Polk is going to hold strong above its weekly 21 for this reason. I, I think Polk will do very well. And you have an origin line, you know, I mean, do you have a horizontal here as well? No, you don't. Uh, yeah, you do have a horizontal here. So you're going to have some buyers try to stop it right around. So you have a, like you have two doubles, right? So you have two double four, ah, shoot. So with not including, not even including the origin line, which is a fifth. So here at the 10, not only do you have an important horizontals, right? So if you can see, come on, Tim. Oh my goodness. My chart is totally not working for me today. All right. So you can see here how uh, these candle bodies in this wick create a horizontal, right? 
Okay. And uh, so, but that horizontal hits this 10. So you're going to have two different groups of buyers and buyers of the weekly 10 and buyers of this horizontal step in. It'll slow the descent down it, or make it bounce if Bitcoin goes to 50K. I would say it was still wick past, but buyers would, or sellers would be worn out from the serious, uh, from the buyers hitting this, right? And then you have another double fortress of people buying up the daily 200, people buying up the weekly 21, totally distinct groups of people, right? Because different people, you know, their decision making of clicking buy, market buy is you know the different groups of people use different charts right they use different things so you just need to guess bounce points when enough different groups of people are clicking by at the same time that is your bounce point period or that is your top period like that, that or your first lower high calling tops is pretty hard but your first lower high it's a lot easier to determine right so same type of thing here so you have two essentially two doubles right you know you have a pair of like a uh, pair of queens and then pocket aces down here really the day of 200 and the weekly 21 is a pretty strong hand i mean you had two strong hands in a row so therefore out of a couple hands of poker you have a strong chance of a bounce there's essentially what you know statistically if you play poker which actually i don't i've never done that but um but i understand enough to like not sound too stupid <laughs> when i talk about it all right so um but i definitely don't know much about poker um especially texas hold'em all right so all right, so that's what we got for both. So let's move on to PDEX. So both of you groups of folks, you know, Polk fans, uh, Polk Markets fans, Pro fans, you know, you really will watch this one because most crypto, right? It's, it's so crypto, um, you know, even uh, zooming in with a microscope to some degree, like it applies to the one hour, the weekly chart, but there's more time spent in ranges than there is time spent going up or tanking down, right? There's more boringness in crypto. Then there is, you know, like biting nails, red candles or yay, I'm rich, you know, green candles. So that's why when I cover a coin that's ranging, you know, even though it gets boring talking about the same stupid lines every day, I totally get it. But kind of but every time I cover it, so I do these videos about twice a week, it's still behaving a little bit differently towards that within that range per Bitcoin price action. So understanding how something moves within a range and getting comfortable with it in terms of anticipating what would happen, how it will react to the primary indicator of any altcoin, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum, it's it's going to be good, even though it can get, you know, a little bit redundant looking at the same stupid thing. I totally get it, but I promise you it's so important based off the fact that most, so most of price action happens in ranges most most time in any market crypto black market testicles oil debt matter is spent in states of being boring all right that's why it's so important to anticipate when the boring will end either to the downside or to the upside okay or even better yet how to freaking make money within the boring which honestly is a fantastic idea you sell the top of the range and you buy the bottom of the range with some exceptions you know three quarters line the point of control all that kind of stuff but that's for the most part all right so let's dive into pdex it's holding really strong with this Bitcoin dip. I don't think so. I think it would take Bitcoin 50k for it to even hit the bottom. So, so this, so what, what PDX is saying, if it can hold this strong, right? So get rid of the EMAs. Like it doesn't matter if the weekly's there. It does like honestly, this is a range. Now, what is holding it this strong? Yeah, it's probably ready to stay above the weekly 10. That's why it's holding strong versus, you know, with Bitcoin taking or going down as it is. So, um, so it would probably take Bitcoin getting 50K to break out of here or to break down out of this or no, no, to even touch it. I mean, I, so if, let me restate that little brain fart. Doo, doo, doo. So if Bitcoin goes to 50K, I bet you would only get a wick below here. It, the week would close, whichever week would do this. If Bitcoin were hit 50K, I bet it would close above this line. I think PDEX looks pretty safe because um, it's ready to go, but what's its primary indicator? Bitcoin, is Bitcoin ready to go? No. So. If PDEX is ready to go, the primary indicator is Bitcoin. When is PDEX going to break out? When Bitcoin's ready. So the next time uh, PPRO is in a range, stuck in a range like this, or uh, Polk is stuck in a range like this, and it's ready to go, but Bitcoin's not, you think it's going to be the same damn rule? Yeah, pretty much. That's why it's important to stay like for all three of these, even if you don't give two shits about PDEX. Um, and uh, so... Uh, so yeah, PDEX, honestly, let, let, so things to look out for, um, honestly, whenever, so really the, the biggest thing to look out for is Bitcoin closing a candle, um, a daily candle closure on Bitcoin. So BTC daily candle closure above 65 K this is, this is going to start approaching this line. And if Bitcoin can hold, you know, in the high sixties and start going up, 
um, and not tank back down. Uh, that that is so once it breaks fully above 65k, you know, after daily, so at, with the daily closure, PDX is going to approach this line. If Bitcoin stays strong, relatively strong, and starts breaking above 68, PDX is going to go bam. Like I would expect PDX to be above the top line by the time Bitcoin is maybe 70. 70k which it just hit 69k like several days ago right so that's not asking for a whole lot that's not a big move on bitcoin at all um but yeah by the time bitcoin's uh 70k uh at that time pdex should be over this line so like so since it's stuck in a range all your emas and indicators are going to be flat and boring and they just stop working it's almost like a black hole right so physics essentially i don't know if it's accurate to say if it stops working but you can't observe what's going on in a black hole and any any physics and understanding about it is literally just math right it, it's theoretical physics which is sexy math right so at this point so um with price doing this for so long my my typical indicators that i use they become a black hole like i can't observe them they're not working like so so i have to do math so my math is um theoretical physics is bitcoin price Essentially, um, does that make sense? So, uh, so with so again to visualize this, PDX is smat has been so long in this range that what I typically use as my indicators for when a move will happen is smashed. They're not working. It's like a black hole. Physics, you know, technically breaks down or is unobservable. It's kind of a a mystery of what it's pr precisely happens beyond the event horizon. So it is in a black hole, and we won't know until you know, an emission jet comes out and then PDX pops back out, right? Uh, or in terms of expecting moves. But so to do that, my theoretical physics is Bitcoin. I can only use Bitcoin to determine what this will do um, uh, because, yeah, what I use typically is broken down right now. So, hey, new viewers, check this out. The two videos that'll pop up here in about 10 seconds, all right? They're a part of my playlist called the most important videos I've ever made. There might be four or five videos in there, but the two right here, if you watch them, right? Uh, at once they pop up, just click it because they could drastically change how much money you make in a in this crypto market. I prompted for the upside, right? <laughs> They're not going to make you lose money necessarily. Uh, no, no. Um, uh, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but it's going to do nothing but help you. I promise you, it's going to make you understand how, why price moves the way it does. Understand it as if it were a person. Like to, you can feel its feelings better. That's what those videos do. So they should be popping up about right now. And so go ahead and click that new viewers. And also before you go, hey. Hit like for me, smash like, and make sure that bell is hidden because this is time-sensitive information. The bell will help me help you walk through a more profitable crypto journey. We're in this together, folks. All right, you just got timified.